Spidey to go suit shopping, here's your look at the new released Hasbro Spider-Man Far From Home 3-in-1 Web Gear Spider-Man. Featuring 15 phrases and sounds, Peter Parker suits up in one of his three spider suits to protect the world from his enemies. I'm going to go ahead and get Spider-Man measure off. And actually, while I'm doing that, I want to send a big thank you to the folks over at Hasbro who are nice enough to send Spider-Man my way. Actually, they sent Web Gear Spider-Man and a whole bunch of other Spider-Man toys, some of which you probably already have seen on the, uh, the channel so far. We're going to continue our trek through the various different Spider-Man Far From Home toys as they get released and as I'm able to, uh, to pick them up. Don't want to get ahead of ourselves though. I want to measure off and give you guys the necessary 411, the necessary 411 on Web Gear Spider Man. According to the Ultra Measuretron 5000, is the toy stands rather impressively at 13.5. That's a pretty tall Spider Man. How does that translate to centimeters? Let me translate that right now. You're looking at uh, Spider Man here standing at rather tall, 34, almost 34 and a half centimeters tall just for fun here's one of the spider-man figures that we've already had a look at i think this one was ultimate glider gear spider-man we can put him right down there to show you how much taller quite a bit taller web gear spider-man is he's about what two and a half times taller than the standard basic class figures and that's pretty tall not only is he tall but he gets a ton of accessories we'll have a look at those right now comes included with a web shooter this is going to attach to really either one of his arms. It's something that, of course, you'll, well, I say of course, but let me assure you, though, you'll have to actually put it onto the side rather than the front. We'll talk about that in a second. Show you the detailing done to the web shooter. When I got it out of the packaging, I thought actually it shot this way, this being the front of the shooter. I was actually absolutely incorrect. It faces this way. You'll know, too, also, when you see the projectiles. But the trigger is at the back. I always seem to think, based on like the toys I used to have, that the trigger would be facing the front, but it's actually instead facing the back. It's irrelevant. I do like the fact that they did sculpt in some webbing on both sides of the shooter, so it doesn't look like just a simple molding of plastic. It's actually fitting just the right size, too, that you could make yourself like a little web shooter for your finger. Of course, finger sizes will vary. You could have giant oven mitt sized hands and it may not necessarily do the same thing that my pointer finger is doing right now, but to show you that it does, it is something that could attach to a finger if you have the proper size finger. I guess if you even have small thumbs, you could put it on your thumb. I can't quite put it on my thumb, but just to, just to show you. Then he comes with a series of various, three in total actually, projectiles, web shooting projectiles. They are all made of the same translucent white plastic, which looking at it when I first took these out reminded me, threw me back to a day of using the old vintage, I say vintage, but they're still around now, those glue guns, you know, those hot glue guns, get them on the skin, ouchy, ouchy, that's going to hurt for days. Those glue guns, remember the glue sticks that would go to the back of those? They kind of remind me of glue sticks molded in three different ways. This is, I guess, the more traditional looking web shooting projectile. I like that they actually have uh, spiraled some webbing and sculpt around it. They all attach the exact same way. So really from this point down, they're all the same connector points. Uh, the next one we can look at is this one here that kind of looks a little bit like cotton candy, looks a little bit like fire. Uh, I like that it's got like a twisted look to it. Again, all made of that translucent plastic. And the last one wrapping up the three is webbing that looks like it's shooting out, spreading out to maybe grab a running away burglar or robber. That's, I kind of always like these ones as well. Light just seems to capture these, just, just the right amount. It looks like they're almost even glowing. Don't want to get too... Uh, caught into just looking at this looking at this for the rest of this review obviously you guys want to see the rest of this so uh, not putting it this way because no no that would be incorrect it could in theory go this way it just means that the shooting projectile will not fire it's going to be stuck in place so we just take that out flip it around to the correct way and you've got yourself trying not to 
fire this across the room because you know it's always going to happen. You say it's not going to happen, across the room. You'll find it months later. Uh, and as you can see, it fires off. Let me just... Uh, it's somewhere, it's somewhere. At least I know it fell down and boom, not across the room. So it comes with those. Uh, let me also show you what I was talking about too. The way that they've sculpted the band, the forearm band that holds the web shooter in place, you can't put the web shooter projectile, the actual shooting projectile uh, firing launcher, I guess, you can't put it this way. You can only put it on the back of his forearm and it just like I said, just kind of snaps, just kind of snaps in place. It stops there, and it stops there, it stops short, and uh, you're not going to be able to move it past that point. So at least he's got something that, when you are ready to move the arms up of his limited possibility, at least you can actually have it as if Spider-Man's shooting off a web of any size, or of three different sizes. Put him right there. Uh, he also comes with these, and this ties into one of his other gimmicks that the figure includes, is the fact that you can dress up Spider-Man. Something of which I'm sure many kids would have wanted to be doing for a while now is being able to dress and customize their Spider-Man. And the fact that Spider-Man has, from what we've seen so far, if you were lucky enough to see the movie, which I haven't yet, seems to have three distinct suits. So of course, he's got his upgrade suits. So of course, he's got his stealth suit. And right smack dab in the middle, Spider-Man has his original homecoming suit. So again, there's a couple of different swappable capabilities to these. They're just simply just casings of plastic molded in such a way that they just go over top of his body. Uh, they've slice these little uh, openings here so that the audio clips which will project out from his tummy you'll still be able to hear it and the activation uh, trigger button which is actually his emblem will be able to stick through whichever one you end up going with being that they've cut out almost just lining things up perfectly right there uh, you can press the button on his emblem and it'll cycle through sound effects whether he's wearing his shells or not. Some really cool things about these guys. We'll talk about those in a second. Also, the things that come included with the figure to go along with those, those shells is it comes with two different... I don't know why. <laughs> this one's just too hot to handle. Uh, it comes with two different head masks. It's funny that you look at a masked figure, and then he comes with his own additional masks, which are just slightly larger than his regular head sculpt, and you just attach those in place, depending, again, which body that you go with. The thing in, that, that's neat about these is uh, the location... We'll talk, obviously, we'll, we'll want to look at the figure, too, as well. But you'll see, if you look at them, there's a, there's a raised peg right there. And on this one, it's not in the same place. You see that? If you put them, well, if you put them above one another, you'll see pe one peg is on this side, one peg is on this side. And that'll play actually a role, depending on what audio clips he cycles through, of the 15 plus. Again, depending on which one you snap into place. We'll talk about that in all in a second. I'm going to get excited to the fact of dressing up Spider-Man, but we don't want to get ahead of ourselves. Let's have a look at the figure first and foremost. Not a bad looking Spider-Man, actually, when it's all said and done. Yes, the figure sadly is limited to posability. It's basically just his head, which is on a ball joint. In fact, actually, I could just look at this right now. Head rotates all the way around. Doesn't, doesn't move up too much doesn't rock back and forth too much but it does rotate all the way around so that's one point then he's got a second in his arms they don't hinge out by the way and he's got a third so that's three and then he also has additional posability though i might say much tighter a little stiffer to rotate but he does have also arm articulation. So that gives us one, two, three, four, and five. Five points of articulation, even though he does have what looks to be visible slits in his legs, telling you you should be able to move them. Uh, Spider-Man doesn't move his legs, and he doesn't move his feet either. So he only has, sadly, five points of articulation, which really, at the end of the day, this is one thing that I wanted to talk about. I mean, for its size, that's a good-sized Spider-Man. And I think to myself, there's always posable figures on the market. In the defense, really, of figures like this, if you even just remove altogether the fact that he does have a gimmick to him, just displaying a figure of this size, 
let's just say put him on a shelf somewhere when you come into the room. It's a pretty commanding looking figure. Doesn't necessarily need to have posability to it. And really in that regard, statues don't have posability to them. It's just something that when you walk into the room, you've got a nice large size Spider-Man. Think, I think he fits the bill for just a nice displayed Spider-Man. Really, you know, again, you could just move the arm up, bring his head around, instantly bingo bango you've got yourself a post spider-man somebody comes into the room is that a statue no it's actually a talking spider-man but i just happen to display him like this so i think there's definitely merits to even when figures look like they're limited in ar articulation at least they've given them at least a wider kind of dynamic stance to him that he looks like he's got there's a little bit more to him than simply just those figures that are stra standing straight and their arms and legs just move back and forth. At least this one has a unique, kind of, like I said, a twist and pose to him that he looks like he's a little bit more dynamic. So there's a point. There's a good positive point to make about this figure. As for the sculpting, as for the coloring, I think he's pretty good as well. Head portrait as well as the rest of his body mold look all on par with what we, would, we should expect for Spider-Man from the Spider-Man Far From Home line. He's still got that texturing and sculpting, uh, giving it uh, kind of these little ridged bumps here on his uh, on the blue parts of his leg. And you can see he's got indentations where he's got the panel lining done also in the blue. Again, he's just a nice looking figure for what he is. I mean, even if you scrap off the idea that he has things that you can add to him, even if you scrap off and don't even note the fact that he does have the audio clips, we'll talk about that in a second. And overall, I just nice, decent enough looking Spider-Man. One thing also that this figure does possess, luckily, is batteries. Visible screw holes, yes, which you're not really going to be seeing from the back of the figure anyways, unless you're displaying the figure from the back. A little strange on you. Uh, but he does have the battery compartment located on the back. Uh, Hasbro have already included batteries, so that's one good thing about it. You don't have to worry about if you're giving this to Jilly, uh, to Jimmy, Jacob, or Jenny, because apparently all the family loves J's in their family. Uh, you know, if you're giving them as a birthday gift or a Christmas gift, you don't have to worry that they're going to open it up, want to play with it, and instantly realize that no batteries were included. At least Hasbro did include batteries for it. So like I said, not a bad looking Spider-Man when it's all said and done. Now the neat thing about this guy is going back to those plates. Now the plates visibly, I mean they are not complete when you put on like the Spidey uh, stealth suit for example. You're still the fact that his legs and his arms, his legs and his arms are still regular spidey costume so it's one thing that you kind of have to suspend some disbelief to but let's go ahead and cycle through his sound effects at some point he will actually uh summon for or ask whoever's playing with the toy to add additional whatever the additional suit is you can outright add it right off the bat but the interesting thing about it is so you remember those pegs we were talking about if you look at his belt He's got buttons located on either side. Those buttons will press in depending on which peg you put in. If you put the stealth suit on, for example, it'll push this peg in. If you use the upgrade suit, so let's grab that right now, there's the peg there, it'll push in, it'll push in this button here, this one here, and uh, like I said, this one here, right over there. So let's go ahead and press some of the sound effects. Again, you can either use the these the vests already to sort of trigger what sound effects you're going to use or what you're going to get but like i said they are unique to whatever vest you're wearing if you're not wearing again i don't want to say vest but really when it's all said and done you're really only going to see one part of spider-man really changed and that's his torso and that's his head so we go ahead and press the button the first time i'm just a friendly neighborhood spider-man now, does it sound like Tom Holland? No, but I think they got a good enough actor for Spider-Man. kind of sounds like something I would hear from a Spider-Man cartoon. I need to go into stealth mode. So it's asking for now the stealth mode. You could really, again, have used the stealth mode suit before you even start pressing the button. But we're going to go ahead and press that in place, and you'll hear also an additional sound effect. We'll go ahead and press that on now. You hear a zipper. Now we can go ahead and press the button again. Well, actually, you know what? While we're at it, let's finish off the touches. We'll add the head portrait, the mask. There we go. And we'll go ahead and press the button again. Now I'm ready to take on Mysterio. I'll swing around this guy to take him out. 
I'm gonna have to be stealthy to track this Mysterio guy. They'll never hear me coming. Shh, I'm trying to be stealthy. I gotta save my friends. They could get hurt. Molten Man is on the loose wreck in this city. Switch to the suit Mr. Stark gave me. Okay, so we just take this off. You also hear a sound effect when you take the costume off. There we go. Press the button again. I'm just a friendly neighborhood Spider-Man. I need to go into stealth mode. Mysterio is trying to escape. Switch to the hero suit. Woohoo! I don't get the feeling Mysterio is a good guy. Switch to the stealth suit. Let's track him. And then, of course, the last suit we can add is the upgrade suit, which again will activate the button located over here. So we'll go ahead and add the suit. It'll make a different sound effect than when we added the vest for the stealth suit. Let's go ahead and do that right now. And we'll go ahead and also add, add the mask. The mask really isn't that much different other than just being a little bit bigger. The red is also slightly darker and it seems to have lost now all the kind of webbing texturing that they've added to the red. Uh, you'll see it's much smoother here on the upgrade suit. Once again, you'll just slide the mask over top. I also find it helps if you take the mask and bring it down a little bit just so it hides off. You'll see it much more on the stealth suit, but then at least you don't see Spider-Man's chin sticking out from underneath. And again, you'll see that it doesn't quite look, you know, he doesn't have the black in his arms, he doesn't have the black in the legs. I guess they could have also given us uh, the additional plates, something which, you know, toys in the 80s would have had. Primarily, it used to be like Batman to Bruce Wayne or Bruce Wayne to Batman. It was always like pieces of leg and pieces of arm that could go over top here. Spider-Man doesn't have that, unfortunately, and as a result of it, he does seem kind of a little incomplete. The top half doesn't look so bad, but the arms and the legs, like I said, probably could have added some additional, like, arm, like armature, like armor pieces that could have gone on the arms and the legs. But anyways, that's the only real nitpick I can make is the fact, I just kind of wish there was a way to finish everything else off too. It's time to be Spider-Man. This tech is awesome. <laughs> super suit equals super webs and super villain punching. This suit has a little of everything. <laughs> Mysterio, we have to help Nick Fury. Molten Man is on the loose wreck in this city. Switch to the suit Mr. Stark gave me. And then once again, we just take that off. Once you take off the vest, you'll hear the sound again. There you go. Like I said, not a bad looking Spider-Man when it's all said and done. You don't necessarily even have to dress up Spider-Man if you want. You could leave these off in their entirety. And at the end of the day, the gimmick doesn't take anything away from the mold that they use. At the end of the day, I still think it looks like a decent enough Spider-Man. And at the end of the day, I think I'm pretty happy with how this one came out. The only icing on the cake, the additional icing on the cake, is the fact that you do have the uh, audio clips that do change as you add whatever suit plate you have over top of it. Of course, we'll change drastically the audio clips that come from the Web Gear Spider-Man here. Now, we've looked at many taller superhero toys on this channel, ones that are mass produced and things that you can find in retail stores relatively easy. The thing about those toys is that they're always very straight. They look like ironing boards and you only have the hinges back and forth on the legs and the arms and a poseable head. So they do feel a little uh, limited by what you can do with them. Spider-Man, ironically enough here, the Web Gear Spider-Man is even more limited for his posability. But there's something about the way that they posed the guy in the first place that make him look a little bit more interesting. Right off the bat, even though he does only have hinges on his arms and a poseable head, he doesn't have anything in his legs, he still looks much more impressive, I have to admit, on a shelf than some of those other taller figures that we've looked at in the past. Obviously, we can know that these are geared towards kids. And along with these being geared towards kids, there's always the gimmicks. The gimmick is the firing mechanism of the web launching uh, launcher that can be attached to his forearm. 
that is nice at least that you can take that off so if, again if you want to just display them like what we're doing in final looks you don't have to add all the extra unnecessary stuff to it if you want the additional swap out of phrases depending on what suit he wears a neat gimmick enough is the fact that they have that shell plate that can go on the front of his torso they can also change out the mask so it does look somewhat like the costume he has in the movie Granted, yes, the arms and the legs still seem, still seem bare and still seem original homecoming suits. So if you can overlook for that, at least you have the option that the audio clips do vary depending on whatever torso piece that you have in place. Rather neat gimmick the way that they were enabled to incorporate that. Just simply by pressing in a button on either side of his belt can dictate which audio clips you're getting of the various multitude of 15 plus phrases and sounds. I know, again, this one is geared towards the kiddies, and I'm sure the kids, after seeing Far From Home, will probably want to get a larger-than-life Spider-Man. This one fits the bill, and in all honesty, I think it even just fits the bill if you want a neat-looking Spider-Man that's a little bit bigger and something you can put displayed on a shelf. I mean, at the end of the day, look how he's posed. He's not standing straight. They've got a wider stance on him and slightly bent in the legs. Yeah, he's not a bad-looking Spider-Man, all things considered. And again, this is geared towards the kiddies, because again, he's got the web gear snap-on pieces and the various different audio clips. Either way, if you guys are interested in picking this one up for yourself, it should be able, available right now in retail stores and toy stores. Look, guys, let me know what you think of the 3-in-1 web gear Spider-Man. It's kind of cool, isn't he? For his size and the pose that they put him in, like I said, not a bad Spider-Man, all things considered. Uh, also, if you guys want to go back and have a look at some of my other Spider-Man reviews, there's a whole playlist just for the web crawler. Also, if you're new to this channel, or if you're a long-time viewer and maybe just never got around to doing it, make sure you hit that subscribe button, and also while you're at it, turn on the bell notifications so that when new videos are coming onto this channel, maybe even future Spider-Man Far From Home reviews, you'll be able to be notified right away. You won't be the guy that's missing out and while everybody else is talking about it at school lunch or even the water cooler, depending on your age, uh, you'll be also the guy that's being, being able to input what you guys thought of the review as uh, you'll get your notifications lickety split. Now, like I said, we're going to have a look at some more upcoming Spider-Man Far From Home toys. So if this is your fancy, then your fancy should be fulfilled with future videos coming onto this channel. Don't worry, we're going to also have a look at some other stuff as well. Thanks for watching, guys, and I'll see you guys next time.